So how does it all start? Allah, nothing else. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, كان الله ولم يكن معه شيء. First there was Allah and there was absolutely nothing else. You know, no, no throne, no pen, no water, no clouds, no skies, no nothing. And Abu Razin, there's an authentic hadith in, in, the, uh, in, in Sunnah Tirmidhi where Abu Razin, he asked the Prophet ﷺ, he says, well, where was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, before all of this? And the Prophet sallallahu says, كان في عما ما تحته هوا وما فوقه هوا. There was no air beneath him, no air above him. It was just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you think about that and how amazing that is. And actually there's a sign in that uh, where the Prophet sallallahu he, he basically tells us that there is nothing but Allah that's worth it. Creation needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing else because in the beginning there was Allah and there was nothing else. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he says that the asdaqu baytin qalahu sha'ir, he said that the, the most truthful poem that a poet has ever spoken, ala kullu shay'in khala Allah batilu, that verily everything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is disposable because it was just Allah and nothing else. Now a lot of times, you know, what, what Abu Razin radiallahu ta'ala anhu was doing when he asked the Prophet ﷺ that and what we do at times when we, when we see various ahadith where Allah is described we try to limit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by our human dimension. So for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends in the last third of the night and he asks, هَلْ مِنْ مُسْتَغْفِرًا أَخْفِرَ لَهْ The very famous hadith, is there anyone seeking forgiveness so I may forgive him? Is there anyone calling upon me so that I may answer him? And we start to think to ourselves, well wait a minute, the last third of the night here is different from the last third of the night there. And so how is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hearing everyone and how is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, how does he judge what's the last third of the night and what about Laylatul Qadr and how does that all work? The problem is you're limiting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by your human dimensions. Allah is not subject to your time. Allah created time. So when you say, can Allah really hear everyone's prayers? Right? I mean, on the day of Arafah, think about that momentous occasion of Arafah. You've got millions of people in one location, all calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in different languages. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hearing each and every single one of their prayers. Why? Because that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is, he is the creator of time subhanahu wa ta'ala, so He is not subject to our dimensions of time. He's not subject to our human dimensions of anything. And that's why the, the ulama, the scholars, they have a very important a principle that they say, كُلُّ مَا خَطَرَ فِي بَالِكَ اللَّهُ بِخِلَافِ ذَلِكَ Every time you think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything that comes to your head in terms of an image or in terms of, you know, in terms of trying to assign a human quality, اللَّهُ بِخِلَافِ ذَلِكَ Just know that Allah is different from what you just imagined. <laughs> You're not going to be able to do it. You won't be able to actually grasp Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be grasped by our human minds. So the Prophet ﷺ, he makes a beautiful dua. Uh, on, on, on the basis of this can Allah wa lam yakun ma'ahu shay that first it was Allah and there was nothing but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ, he taught us to say, Allahumma anta al awwalu falaysa qabla ka shay. Oh Allah, you are the first and so there is nothing before you. Wa anta al akhiru falaysa ba'da ka shay. And you are the last and so there is nothing after you. Wa anta al zahiru falaysa fawqa ka shay. And you are the manifest, the apparent, and so nothing is above you. وَأَنْتَ الْبَاطِنُ فَلَيْسَ دُونَكَ شَيْءٍ But at the same time, you are the hidden, and so nothing is beyond you. And so the Prophet ﷺ, what, he, what he's teaching us here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the first, but He's also the last. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the manifest, but He's also the hidden. And that's why you have the very famous, uh, the, the f very famous ayah in Surah Al-Hadid, which actually you know, combines these names together, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هُوَ الْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ وَالظَّاهِرُ وَالْبَاطِنُ وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ That he is the first and the last. And the presence of the letter wow here, the ulama, the scholars, they say that what Allah is telling us is that he's the first despite being the last. He is the manifest despite being the hidden at the same time. And so when you get this presence of, or when you get this idea of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being you know so mighty one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the almighty and being the king and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know uh, being all of these things that he describes himself with you might start to think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is disconnected like a king is usually disconnected from the lowest subjects a king usually is doesn't really know what's going on except by what he's informed with 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right after He describes Himself and He describes the creation of the heavens and the earth and He describes the creation of the throne and He describes all of these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but listen, يَعْلَمُ مَا يَلِجُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا Allah is so aware that He knows what goes into the earth and what comes out of it. He knows everything, right? Now, the Prophet ﷺ, he also taught us, and there are many names that, that we can take from this beautiful hadith of the Prophet ﷺ here, and many attributes. The Prophet ﷺ, he also taught us to call upon Allah with his greatest name. Ismullah al-A'zam, the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't share what that name was, but he said وسلم, that the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is found in Surah Al-Baqarah, it's found in Surah Ali Imran, and it's found in Surah Al-Taha. Okay, in Surah Taha. So the first one, what we can take from that, Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul al-Qayyum. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the greatest ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, the greatest ayah of the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, Allah, there is no god besides Him, al hayy al-Qayyum, the ever living and the ever sustaining. That same name is found in the beginning of Surah Ali Imran. Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum Once again, the ever-living, the ever-sustaining. And then in Surah Taha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَنَتِ الْوُجُوهُ لِلْحَيِّ الْقَيُّومِ that, that everything perishes, that the faces, are, that everything perishes and everything is presented to al hayy al qayyum Once again, the ever-living and the ever-sustaining. And what the ulama say are, are so powerful about those two names, Number one, all of the sifat al dhatiyah which are the, the attributes that describe the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they all come from His being al hayy from His being ever-living. And all of the sifat al fi'liyah all of the, the uh, attributes that describe the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come from His being al qayyum which is ever-sustaining. Uh, because usually what you think of a person, you know, or if you think of a human being, as they get older, they start to become less capable. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never is rendered incapable. Allah is ever living, He always was, He always is, He always will be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always qayyum, He's always in control. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not age, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not become incapable. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never becomes tired, never you know, has to take a nap, never becomes drowsy. Allah is always in control. So al hayy he is the ever living and all life is derived from him subhanahu wa ta'ala al qayyum he is always sustaining and everything can o- and anything uh, and everything will only be sustained by him subhanahu wa ta'ala kan allah wa lam yakun ma'ahu shay so it just starts off with that it was allah and there was absolutely nothing else it was the infinite and then everything finite came after that it was the one who needs no cause, and then everything that needs a cause that is created comes after that. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to, to derive, to have eternal life on the Day of Judgment. Allahumma ameen.